Hey everyone, welcome back to the API series. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about automating delete call inside. So first of all, let's understand what is the purpose of delete request and where it is used. Delete HTTP method, it's used to request the removal or deletion of a resource on the server. So this is one of the, the four main HTTP methods along with get, post and put, which is used for interacting with the resources. So we've already covered about get, post and put in the previous video. Today we are going to cover only delete API. Next thing is, let me tell you about some scenarios where delete request is used. First scenario is deleting the user account. For example, in any of the application, let's take the example of Amazon. If you want to delete your account, so you have this delete button. And when you click on that, so in the back end, delete API is getting called. Fine. So which basically deletes that user account. So this is one of the scenario. Other scenario is if you want to remove your post or comment, let's say you have added your comment on any of the platform, maybe on LinkedIn, and you want to delete it. So in that case also, your delete API will be called. The next scenario is removing files or media. For example, you have uploaded some pictures or videos and you want to delete it. In that case also, delete request is called. Fine. So these are a couple of scenarios where delete request. Now let's understand with the real-time example in Postman and then later on we will automate it. So in Postman, we have the user's API. So this is a post call. So what happened? What is the process of delete? So first of all, let's say delete basically removes your resource. So what does it mean? For example, you have created a resource using post API. So let's take the example of this user's API. In this user's API, what I'm doing, we are creating a new user. So if I send the request, so we will see new user is getting created. And this new user has this specific ID. So this is a unique ID. Now, if you want to delete this user, what we will do? We will just change the method to delete and we will change our endpoint. So we already have a delete. So this is our delete call. And in this, what we are doing? So our HTTP method is delete in this case. You see, we are passing the mandatory header, which is the bearer token. Fine. And then in the URL, we are just adding the user ID, which we copied from the post user. So when we are creating a user, we are getting the ID over there, right? So you just have to copy the ID and pass inside the URL of your delete call and then send the request. So once you send the request, you see we are getting 204, which means successful response, but with no content. The 204 is successful, but with no content. Okay. So this is the flow for deletion. So deletion is basically, it is deleting your resource on the server. Now, if you try to fetch this user with the ID, you will get 404. So let me copy over here. And let we hit the API. You see, we are getting 404. So that means resource is not available now. Fine. So today, what we will do, we will automate the exact scenario, but in our Cypress code. Okay. Now let's go back to editor and uh, let's start writing the code. I've already created a sample test case over here. So this is the basic template. And inside this, what we will do, first of all, we will call our post request and we will create a new user. Then we will fetch the ID from that response and we will pass it to delete API. First of all, we want to make a post call to create the user. In this case, I will be using cy.request. So we know to make any API call in Cypress, we have to use cy.request. And what is the method? So the method over here is post. And after this, we have to pass the URL. So what is the URL? We will just copy from the postman. So let's go to the post call. This is our URL. This is a user creation API. So let's copy the URL for this. So URL value. What is the next step? Next is we'll copy the headers. So headers information. What is the header information? We have one mandatory header, which is your authorization bearer token. Let's copy this as well. So authorization and bearer token. Okay. Apart from this, in post call, we are also passing the body, right? But over here, as we know, we have seen this in previous videos as well. Our email address is basically unique. So if I try to hit this, send the request again to this user API, it will fail. You see? So in order to generate a random email, we already have created a function in the post, in the post test. So I'll be using the same. So let me copy the same code from my post users. So this is the function for generating email address. So let me copy this. And apart from this, we are generating the payload dynamically. So for that also, we have already have covered this in the previous video. If you're not watched, I would suggest you just go and watch that also because it will be clear how we are creating the random email and how we are generating the dynamic payload. Okay. So now we are generating the email. So this is, and now in the payload, we are passing the same email. So this payload I will pass in the body. Fine. 
So now what we are doing, till now we are sending the request, post request to the CPI, to the user CPI. Afterwards, we will store the response. Why we want to store the response? Because in order to delete the resource, we need to fetch the resource ID first. So first of all, I will write over here constant user ID because you can pass any variable. I'm just creating, passing, uh, creating the name as user ID. And for her, we will store the response dot body dot ID. Because we are, like we saw in the postman, we are getting ID as part of the response body. Fine. So we got the user ID. Afterwards, we want to make a delete call. So cy dot request. And in this case, the method would be delete. In the last request, it was post. But over here, it is delete. And apart from that, what is the URL? So URL is basically, the sun will copy the URL from here. So this is our URL. Apart from that, we also have a user ID. So, but we will not pass the user ID over here. We will just create a path parameter. We'll, we are generating it dynamically because every time post call is made, a user ID is getting generated, okay? And the same thing we are passing as a path parameter in our delete call URL. Fine. After this, we have to pass headers. So mandatory header over here is actually authorization token, bearer token. So this is again same. So let's copy the same thing. So now sending the request to delete API. Afterwards, now we want to verify if our response status is 204. So we know in case, mostly in case of delete API, we are getting 204 because delete is just an action. It is not returning us anything. So in these cases, our status code is 204 right so response dot status dot e 204 so guys you should know the basic http code because most of the time people just know about 200 400 500 but when it comes to these kind of status code like 204 or 408 people get confused so you should know these are very famous interview questions these are 204 means no content fine after making a delete call we will make one more call which is the get call why we are making a get call? Because we just saw in the postman, if we try to fetch the same user, it will throw us resource not found. So it, it gives us a confirmation. Yeah, our resource is not available. Okay. So let's write over here. What is the method? Method is method is get. So this is our get call. And what is the URL? So URL and header is basically same as what we have in delete. Why? Because in get call also, we are trying to fetch the user. And how we are trying to fetch the user, we are passing the user ID, which we are getting in the user response. Okay. While creating the user, we are getting user ID in the response and same ID we are passing in the endpoint of get and as well as endpoint of delete. Fine. So now what we have done, we have now we, now we have made a get call. After this, I will store the response. So this is my response. And now I want to verify if our response dot status. So now we are expecting it to be 404. Why? Because we have already deleted that resource. And now in this case, it should be 404, which is resource not found, right? So it should be what value? It should be equal to 404. Fine. But we know this, this call is going to fail. Why? We have also, we have already seen this in the previous video. When we have our response code other than 2x or 3x, which is successful response. In that case, Cypress automatically fails your test case. So you have to tell Cypress explicitly, yeah, this is expected behavior. We are checking you know, the bad request. So in that case, you have to pass this option, which is fail on status code and it should be false. So basically we are telling do not fail this, this API call and we are checking the response status also over here. Okay. So now if we run the test case, it will not, it will not fail until unless your assertion is failing. Fine. So let me explain you once again. First of all, we created a user using the post call in which we passed our dynamic payload. So this payload is, we have mentioned over here, all the mandatory details. We are generating a random email for which we are using this function. I've already covered this in my previous video for the post call. If you're not watched, you can just check that to understand more about how we can generate the email and how we are passing the dynamic payload. After making a user API call, we are saving the user ID. So this is our user ID, which we are getting in the response. So once we get the user ID, we are passing it to the delete call as well as to the get call. So in delete call, we want to delete the user. That's why we are calling it. And after the 
After this, we are checking our status code is 204. Why 204? Because it's saying no content. In delete call, we are not expecting any content. Okay. And now in the final, we are making a get call. So now let's run the test case and let's see what is the status. So let's uh, run it. So this is our delete user. And if you see, first of all, we are making a post call. Then we are making a delete call for 204. We are expecting 204 and the assertion is also passing. Next thing is we are making a get call in which we are getting 404, which is again passing your assertion over here. Okay. So this is the end-to-end -end flow for deleting any uh, resource. So this is how we can automate the delete HTTP method in Cypress. So you should know how to test it end to end and uh, then you will get the clear picture. And also we discussed about various scenarios where we can use delete API. So yeah, that's it for today's video. And I'll be pushing all the code on my GitHub. So I'll, I'll share the repo name in the comment section and you can check that. If you want to check the whole code, you can refer to that. I hope you're liking the content and if you have any queries, feel free to add in the comment box. I'll try to reply that. Subscribe to the channel. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading more such videos.